Before you start your puka shell ring, make sure that the hole in your shell is large enough to accommodate the wire. If not, use a hand reamer or a drill to make the hole larger. We start the ring by wrapping a quarter size smaller than your ring size. For example, if you want a size 8 ring, we're going to wrap the wire twice around size 7 and 3 quarters. When the wires overlap, you'll pull it really tight and hold it in place. And then you'll get a Sharpie pen and make a mark across all three wires. This mark is very helpful in getting your ring sized exactly the way you want. So now you'll take your ring off of the mandrel and you'll see that the three dots have moved. Now get your chain nose pliers and you'll pinch on one of the black dots on the outer ring of wire and you'll take that long piece of wire and pull it up to a 90 degree angle. Repeat on the other side, making sure that you're exactly on the black dot when the wire goes up to that 90 degree angle. When you push the wires back together, it should be the size of ring that you want. Put your puka shell on and you can have it either facing outward so you can see the spiral or flip it over and it can be domed. Either way, it's up to you. With the puka shell on the ring, put the ring back onto the ring mandrel and we will start to turn the wires to lock it in. First, pull the wires away from each other horizontally so that they are tight and secure. And now you'll start to propeller the wire, much like helicopter blades going round and round. You want to stay even, low, and tight to the mandrel. As you do this, the wire will begin to spiral down inside of the shell where you can't see it. And as the wires tighten, you'll see the coil begin on the outside of the shell. At this point, you can use your thumb to push the coil down firmly inside the center of the shell. And keep spiraling, pulling the wires one by one. Keep going until you have the size of coil that you want. You can make a tiny one or a big one, that's up to you. To strengthen the ring shank, we're going to hammer it with a nylon or a metal hammer. The nylon hammer will harden it, the metal hammer will texture it, and also it will stretch the metal out so it can make it larger, just in case it was a little bit tight. Now we'll start wrapping the long wires around the ring shank. When you're wrapping, make sure that you're holding the ring tight and secure in your fingers because as you pull those wires tighter, you don't want your ring to start shrinking. Wrap about two or three times and at this point you can either cut the wire, tuck it in and finish it, or in a little bit, we'll show you how we make a little spiral. This thick and short wire can be difficult to pull with your fingers, so switch to a flat nose plier and use that for leverage and to pull the wire around. That can be very handy. If you have excess wire at the end of your tail, what you can do is begin a spiral. So you can flush cut the end of that wire, anywhere from 3 8 of an inch to about half an inch tail, depending on how big your spiral. And with your round nose plier, 
start coiling. Switch to your flat nose. And keep rolling that spiral up until it is seated on top of the ring shank. You can press it down on top of the ring shank to secure it and repeat on the other side. Yay, you're almost done. At this point, you can hand polish it or throw it in a tumbler. And what the tumbler will do is shine it up and make it stronger. And we recommend that if you are going to be making more rings. Have fun!